In this video, we'll take a look at self-testing or self-monitoring GFCI receptacles. I'll explain what they are, how they work, when and why they became a requirement, how to tell if you currently have them, and whether or not they're required in your home. Then I'll show you the best and easiest method to test your existing GFCI receptacles so you know that they're wired correctly and that they're functioning properly. Hint, it's not pressing the test button. Hey guys, John here with Backyard Main. Welcome to the channel. Before we talk about self-testing GFCI receptacles, it's important to understand what GFCI protection actually is. Now, I know a lot of you already know this, but in case you don't, GFCI stands for Ground Fault Circuit Interrupter. Basically, it's a device that detects when electrical current is flowing through an unintended path, like through water or through your body. When this happens, power from the GFCI will quickly shut off, minimizing electrical shock and preventing electrocution. GFCIs have been required in our homes since 1975, and the locations where they're required have been expanding ever since. There were really two issues with the existing design. In order for a GFCI to protect us, one, we have to know that it's wired correctly, and number two, we have to know that it's functioning properly. GFCI receptacles have line side and load side terminals. In order for them to function properly, the feed wires need to be connected to the line side terminals on the device. If downstream outlets will also be protected, then those wires would be connected to the load side terminals. Manufacturers put labels over the load side terminals to help prevent incorrect wiring, but some people can't easily determine which wires are line and which ones are load. And if they get it wrong, they won't have ground fault protection. And the second issue was manufacturers state that their GFCI receptacles must be tested monthly in order to ensure that they're still operating correctly and providing life-saving protection. But in reality, very few people test their GFCI receptacles at all, and certainly not monthly. But even if your Uncle Fred or your Aunt Susie were setting reminders on their phones to test their GFCI receptacles on a monthly basis, it was still possible for an undetected failure or malfunction to occur in between tests. And for this reason, the Consumer Product Safety Commission requested auto monitoring requirements on all GFCI receptacles in order to help keep consumers safe. UL Standard 943 was updated, making it mandatory that all GFCI receptacles manufactured after June 28, 2015, feature a self-test and reverse line load miswire function. And the self-test GFCI receptacle was born. Well, not exactly. As you know, these things take a lot of time. So most manufacturers were already producing self-testing GFCI receptacles in anticipation of the change. This didn't mean that standard GFCI receptacles couldn't be sold and installed. They could as long as existing inventory was available. They just couldn't be manufactured again after that date. Now, nine years later, it may be difficult to find one, but if you happen to have one on a shelf out in the shop, it can still be used today. So how does the self-test and the reverse line load function work? Well, there are many brands that offer self-testing GFCIs on the market, and they all pretty much do the same thing. They automatically test themselves for the ability to not only detect, but also to respond to a ground fault. Some brands will test themselves every three seconds, while others may test every 15 minutes or even all the way up to three hours. According to the UL guidelines, they must also notify the end user that there's a problem with the GFCI's capability. And if the capability is not working, they must produce an alert either visually or audibly and shut off power to the receptacle. And for added safety, ones like the Leviton Smart Lock Pro have a reset lockout function, which does not allow you to use the reset button if the receptacle isn't functioning properly. If the self-test fails, it's time to replace the receptacle. The line load miswire function works by cutting off power to the receptacle and not allowing it to be reset if it's not wired correctly. 
So whether the receptacle is being installed new or it's being reinstalled in the future, a line load miswire will result in a power loss and the inability to reset the unit. So with this change, do you have to run out and replace all the GFCI receptacles in your home? No, the ones you have are just fine as long as they're wired correctly and functioning properly. And I'll show you the best way to test them. But first, let me show you how to tell whether or not you have the self-testing type installed in your home, which by the way, the manufacturers recommend you test these monthly as well. All self-testing GFCI receptacles will have a status LED. Some will have an LED for the trip state and another for the failure alarm. Others will use the same LED for both functions. When you turn on power to a self-testing GFCI that's not in the trip state, the LED will quickly flash red when the test is initiated. If this happens, you have a self-testing GFCI receptacle. If it doesn't flash red or you have no LED at all, then your GFCI is not the self-testing type. Now I'll show you the best and easiest method for testing your GFCIs. All GFCI receptacles have the test reset buttons on the face. Many people will push the test button and then the reset button and think they tested their GFCIs. But the manufacturers actually recommend that you plug something in like a light or a radio to be sure the power cuts off when the test button is pressed. That's not very convenient, but there is a simple solution. I use this inexpensive circuit tester with the GFCI test function. It's very easy to use and it gives you some additional information as well. We just plug it in and the lights indicate whether or not the receptacle is wired correctly, whether or not the ground is connected, and whether power is available. Then we just press the test button, the GFCI trips, and the lights turn off to verify the GFCI function properly and cut off power to the receptacle. Press the reset button and power should return. If you have standard receptacles wired to the load side of the GFCI, you can test them as well. Just plug in the tester, press the button, and power should go out. Press the reset button on the GFCI and it comes back on. Very simple to use. Now you can buy this as a standalone outlet tester or you can buy it as a kit like I did. I'll link both down in the description in case you're interested in picking one up for yourself. Electrical standards and regulations update often and new products are offered as a result. You may want to watch this video next where I go over a groundbreaking new change to branch circuit requirements in the 2023 National Electrical Code. Or if you want to learn more about GFCI protection and the new 2023 requirements, you can find that in this video right here. I'm John from Backyard, Maine. Thanks for watching.